Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. Now you know I like cute shoes, but I also love fun socks just as much. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make sublimation socks like these. Aren't they awesome? These are a great way to add color and a special touch to any outfit. So let's head on over to the craft table and we'll get started. Now, like most sublimation projects, the content and quality of your item, also called the blank, is really important for vibrant, long-wearing socks. I tried a few brands and styles to show you which ones I like the best. These tall, athletic ones here are from Silky Socks. The smaller, athletic socks are from NC Hosiery. I ordered both of these from Amazon and you can find the links in my supply list. For ankle socks, I picked up some polyester socks from Five Below and some polyester and cotton socks by Hanes from my local Dollar Tree. Some are completely polyester, which is the standard for sublimation projects, but I also tried a polyester and cotton blend. We even did some tests to show you how the designs will look after a wash and dry. Very important, you gotta wash your socks, right? The other really, really important thing you need is a sock jig, which looks like this. There are lots of styles available, but I really like this aluminum set, which is also linked in the tools below. The small pair works with ankle socks and the big ones here are for larger styles. They even have holes for hanging them up. The sock slides right on and the jig keeps the fabric at the correct tension, not too stretched and not too loose. Make sure you line up the toe seam with the bottom edge and then help the sock run straight along the jig for the most consistent results. Then we just need our usual sublimation supplies. A sublimation printer with compatible ink and paper, a heat source, got my Cricut Easy Press over here, an optional pressing mat, white cardstock and butcher paper to protect it, and heat resistant tape to keep everything in position. Today, I'm going to use my Epson Eco Tank, but you could also use a sawgrass. I'm using a sub paper, and I'm gonna show you how to use both a Cricut Easy Press and a Cricut Auto Press so you're ready to use either one. You can also just use a traditional heat press, of course. Beyond this, I just recommend you have a ruler, a paper trimmer, or scissors, a pencil, and a lint roller handy, as they will also help you with a few steps. And of course, you'll need some designs for your socks. So let's get started by finding my cute free files that look like lace-up shoes and cute flip-flops. Step one, get or prepare your sublimation sock designs. If you already have a sublimation sock image ready to go, you can skip to step two to print the file. But if you want to use my free designs, let me show you how to get them. To find the sock designs, go to jennifermaker.com 481 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs by searching the page for number 481 and then click it to download the zip file. Inside there are PNG designs sized for ankle and longer length socks, from flip-flops in several styles for ankle socks, to long designs and high tops in various colors. I'll show you how to prepare one of the ankle sock designs first, then some tips on using the larger images. We'll prepare the designs in Google Docs and Google Drawings, so make sure you have a free Google account. Google has an app for Docs, but I recommend using your computer for the best results instead of a mobile device. And be sure to also use the Google Chrome web browser. So to begin, open Google Chrome and go to google.com slash docs to open Google Docs. Next, click on blank to start a new document. Go to the file menu and select page setup. Change your margins to zero and your paper size to match your sublimation paper. Mine is eight and a half by 11 inches, which is letter size. Then go to the insert menu, select image and pick upload from computer. Locate the sublimation design that you want to use. It's probably in your downloads folder and then click open. I'll use one of the flip flop designs. Remember, if you wanna decorate a different type of sock, stay tuned and I will explain how to do that. The image will appear, but we need to measure the socks before we can resize it. For the ankle socks, use the smaller set of sock jigs. Slide the jig into one of the socks. 
The round end should line up with the toe seam and the end with the hanging cutout will be at the cuff. The design goes on top of the sock, so adjust the fabric until the heel is centered on the back. Then measure the sock's length and width on the jig. Yours may be different, but my ankle sock is about three and three quarter inches wide and about nine inches from toe to cuff. Back on your screen, right click on the image and select image options. Resize the design to be a bit larger than your socks using the size fields. I want each design to cover most of the socks top, but the edges don't have to be perfect. So I left the lock aspect ratio box checked to get the length about a quarter inch longer than my sock on the jig. Then I unchecked it and used the edges of the bounding box to adjust it further. Half the image width is about the width of one sock design, so I made it wider. Just don't change the proportion so much that it doesn't still look like a foot. <laughs> Remember, it doesn't have to fit exactly, and I'll show you how to catch any extra ink when you go to press it. Then click the design and select the second icon from the left in the menu below it, which means wrap text. Now you can click and drag the image anywhere on your page. I recommend you put it in the center, that way you're sure both socks fit. Now we're ready to print. Step two, print your transfer. Print the design from Google Docs following my earlier sublimation design printing tutorial for your printer and materials. You'll find all the details over at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation print method. Once printed, be sure to let the ink dry as they could smudge otherwise. Then trim them apart, leaving some white paper where we'll tape the designs down. Step three, prepare your socks. The ankle socks are small enough that you can sublimate one or both at a time, but I'll press them together since I have enough space. To keep ink from transferring to the sock jigs, wrap a sheet of clean white butcher paper tightly around each jig. Smooth it out and use a piece of heat resistant tape to secure the paper to itself on the back. Make sure the jig is all covered. Place both socks on the jig so the heels are on the bottom and the lower edges match the toe seams. Make sure the fabric is totally smooth. The jig not only keeps the fabric's tension steady, it also prevents ink from bleeding through to the other side. I'll use my Cricut Auto Press, which I set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 205 degrees Celsius with a time of 10 seconds for preheating. These settings worked for my project, but be sure to check the Cricut Heat Guide to verify the details for your materials and tools. It's over at jennifermaker.com slash easypress. Place a clean white sheet of cardstock on the pressing surface. Put your sock blanks on the jigs with the heels down on the cardstock. Preheat them for 10 seconds to remove moisture and wrinkles. Also, be sure to use a lint roller to remove any extra strings or dust or anything like that that could get in the way of an awesome transfer. These are super important details for a great transfer. Step 4. Sublimate your socks. As with all sublimation projects, be sure to open a window or turn on a fan to improve your ventilation. I'm going to adjust my timer on my heat press to 40 seconds for the transfer. Put the designs face down on the socks so the toe ends line up. The cardstock will catch any ink that goes over the sides. Add a few pieces of heat resistant tape to keep the transfers in place. You can secure them right to the cardstock since the designs are large enough. Avoid putting tape over the ink to keep the transfers consistent though. Cover the whole thing with a sheet of white butcher paper and press for 40 seconds. Again, our temperature is 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 205 degrees Celsius. When the time is up, gently open the press and remove the butcher paper. And to prevent ghosting or blurring, let the prints cool for a couple of minutes as the sublimation process finishes. After it's cooled some, remove the tape and the paper. Once the socks and jigs are cooled, remove the decorated socks and reveal the final look. This is so much faster than knitting a pair of socks. Now, if you use a Cricut Easy Press, the same settings worked. Just remember to lower and lift the heat source straight up and down to avoid smudging the images. You don't need to add any extra pressure. How about athletic or longer socks? To decorate taller socks, you'll need taller designs. And I have them for you. 
Now, if they won't fit on one sheet, we can make it work. I'll show you how with the orange high top design on athletic socks. This design also has a front and a back, so there are two files to use. Let's start with the front with the laces. Put a sock on a tall jig just like before. I'm using the polyester socks by Silky Socks for this test. Keep the sock straight and then line up the toe seam with the end of the jig. Measure the height and width. Yours might be different than mine, but the front of my tall sock is about three and a half inches wide and 18 and a half inches tall. We'll need to blend the sides, so I print each design about a half inch wider than that. Remember, the cardstock will catch any extra ink. Now to prepare the design, you just open Google Drive in Chrome and click on New. Go to More and select Google Drawings. It's similar to Google Docs and also free. In Google Drawings, go to the File menu and select Page Setup. Under the drop-down, select Custom and adjust the page to be half an inch wider than your sock on the jig. That way we can slightly overlap and blend the side seams. I'll make the page 4 inches wide and 19 inches tall, and then click Apply. Now the page won't look like a normal document, but don't worry. Now the design. Go to the Insert menu, click Image, and select Upload from Computer. Locate the sublimation PNG you want to use and click Open. I'll start with the orange high top design for the front of the sock. The image will appear but won't be the right size. To resize it, click the design and then select Format Options. The design is flexible enough to adjust the proportions, so have the lock aspect ratio box unchecked. Change the width and height boxes to fit the dimensions you set for the page. Drag it to fit in the canvas if it's not in the right position. Make sure you can see the whole thing. Once the size is correct, click File, Download, and then PDF Document. And rename and save the file as a PDF. Now let's prepare the sock's back design. Since I'm not decorating the bottom of the sock, I'll measure from the top edge to the heel. Mine is about 8.5 inches. Use the same steps to create a PDF in Google Drawings with the back design sized for your dimensions. Again, round up with the width a bit so it can wrap around the sides. I made mine 4 inches wide and 8 inches tall. Drag it to fit in the page if it's not in the right position, and then save it as a PDF as well. We'll use the free version of Adobe Acrobat Reader to tile and print our designs. You can download it and get installation instructions from adobe.com slash reader. Once Acrobat Reader is installed and opened, click the File menu and pick Open. Select the PDF you saved for the sock's front and click on the printer icon. In the print dialog box, we'll adjust a few settings. Your window might look different, but use mine as a guideline. Be sure that your sublimation printer is selected and then click on the poster tab. This will allow us to print the full length of the sock in sections on two sheets of paper. Set overlap to 0.02 and turn on cut marks and make sure the orientation is portrait. Make sure your sublimation paper is loaded correctly in your printer. The packaging will give you a clue as to which way it should go. Now print two copies of your design with the best paper and highest quality print settings. You don't need to mirror. If you don't know how to print a PDF from your sublimation printer, please visit jennifermaker.com slash sublimation t-shirt. Once the ink is dry, use a paper trimmer to trim the extra paper off the design's seam edges. Feed the paper into the trimmer until you see the cut marks, then trim the paper along that edge. Use heat-resistant tape to join the sheets together so the design is complete, being careful not to cover any ink on either side. Cut or tear off any excess paper around the designs and tape. Print two copies of the back design with the size set to 100%. Each copy will fit on one sheet of paper. Trim the excess paper and set them aside. Since these are larger designs, you can press them either all at once with a large heat press or in sections with a smaller one. I'm going to show you how with my Cricut Easy Press. Again, check the Cricut Heat Guide for your best settings. I set my Easy Press to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 205 degrees Celsius and the time to 10 seconds for the preheat. Place your pressing mat on a flat surface. 
Wrap a sheet of butcher paper around each jig, just like before, to protect it from ink. Use a piece of heat-resistant tape to secure the paper to itself on the back. And then trim the paper to match the jig shape and use more tape to secure the layers in place. Put your sock blanks on their jigs, heel side down, on the cardstock, and preheat them for 10 seconds. You can do it in sections, just make sure each area gets the full time. And then don't forget to use a lint roller to remove any extra strings or threads or dust. Clean both sides this time. And put a clean white page of cardstock on the pressing surface to protect it. I'll press one sock at a time. Place the front printed image face down on a sock. Line up the toes and then lay it straight to cover the sock evenly. Remember, we printed the design a bit larger than the sock to make sure the area is covered, so the print will go over the edges a bit. Just make sure there is cardstock underneath to catch the ink. Your design might stop at a different spot depending on the sock. Use a few pieces of heat resistant tape to secure the transfer in place, again avoiding the ink where it will touch the sock. If you're using a large heat press, use the earlier Cricut Auto Press steps to press the full design all at once. And if you're using a smaller press, flip the transfer and the jig over and cover it with a sheet of white butcher paper. Use your easy press to press down on the design for 40 seconds. You don't need any extra pressure beyond what you would normally use. Add a pencil mark on the butcher paper along the upper edge of the Cricut Easy Press so you know where to begin the next section and don't miss anything. When the time is up, lift the Easy Press straight up and press the next section of the sock. Try not to jostle the other section since the sublimation ink is still settling from the first press. And don't forget to reset your timer. If you're using a smaller press, it might require more sections. When the entire sock has been pressed, remove the butcher paper and allow the sock and the jig to cool. Then take off the tape and the sublimated sheet. For the back design, flip the jig over and just barely roll the printed sock fabric over the edges until you see a small strip of color on either side of the sock. This is going to help you blend the seams. Place the sock printed side down on a clean sheet of white cardstock. Put the back design on top so it starts just above the heel. Again, the design will go over the edges a bit to help with blending. Once everything is aligned, secure it with heat resistant tape. Cover the project with another sheet of white butcher paper and press at the same temperature and time as the front. And when your time is up, remove the butcher paper and allow the sock to cool. Decorate the matching sock and then wear them with pride once everything is cooled. I bet you're already dreaming up sock ideas, aren't you? <laughs> All right, but which sock? Which should you use? Which brand is best? I know you're wondering this. I tested out several common tall and ankle socks to help you choose. We even washed them to see how they fared. Whichever socks you choose, wash them in cool water and tumble dry to keep the designs crisp and avoid pilling or other damage. All of my test socks held up pretty well and didn't lose much vibrancy with one exception. First, the ankle socks. I tried a pair by Hanes that I found at my local Dollar Tree and some 100% polyester socks from Five Below. Now, the Hanes socks were actually only about 60% polyester, with the rest being cotton. So I was a bit nervous since the blend doesn't always soak up the sublimation ink as well. But they worked better than I expected. And they were a bit scratchy at first, but after a gentle wash and dry, they're nice and soft. These held their shape well, but did fade a bit, as we can expect with a polyester cotton blend when it's used for sublimation. The socks from Five Below started out soft, which is nice. They're vibrant and they held their color better after the wash since they're 100% polyester, but they seem to be smaller than the Hanes socks and they didn't hold their shape or size very well after we washed them. So if vibrancy is important, go for the polyester socks. If you want the socks to hold up a bit longer, even if they fade a little bit, the Hanes blended ankle socks will work for you. They're about the same price and you can make a lot of ankle socks since they're so small. 
Now for the tube socks, I tried these sublimation specific ones and another one by Silky Socks. The sublimation tube socks are soft and they took the ink well, but they're not as tall or as cushy as the Silky Socks. They're affordable and not scratchy at all, so a perfectly good choice for this project. The silky socks, however, are very comfortable and really soft on your feet. They're thicker than the others and stretch well while retaining their original shape. And they're a bit taller, so you have more space to decorate. The design really held up well too. I'd pick these if the slightly higher cost is okay, or if I was making them for myself because I'd prefer the extra cushioning. Overall, I'd say these are all good options to use for sublimating socks. Just depending on the style that you're going for, the design, and maybe your budget if you're making several pair. I had a great time making all of these socks. If you want to learn more about sublimation, be sure to check out my sublimation startup mini course over at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup. I cover picking and setting up a printer, helpful tools, and lots of items that you can sublimate onto, not just socks. And there's a great introduction to printing and pressing your designs so you can get started right away. It's an on-demand course so you can sign up right now and learn at your own pace. If you want some inspiration for sublimation, I also have a group just for sublimation crafting. Join us at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group to ask questions, share ideas, and get inspired. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Mm -hmm.